Hi everybody, Mr. Pauler here. In this video, I want to share a virtual DNA extraction lab with you from the Genetic Science Learning Center. Let's go into the lab to get started. Our goal in this activity is to collect a DNA sample from a test subject. DNA extraction is the first step in analyzing samples of DNA for genetic testing, identifying bodies, or analyzing other types of forensic evidence. DNA extraction allows the DNA to be purified. This is accomplished by removing other types of materials found in cells, such as proteins. Let's click on Next to continue the activity. Here we're looking inside of a cell, inside of the nucleus, is where we find chromosomes. A chromosome contains two different molecules. There are histone proteins and there is the DNA molecule itself. So where do we start? We need to collect some cells from our test subject in order to purify DNA. Inside of your mouth, there are epithelial cells, and these cells contain DNA. This will be the DNA that we will purify from the test subject to use for the DNA extraction experiment. Our procedure will be to collect the cheek cells and then break those cells open to release the DNA, and then we'll separate the DNA from proteins and other cellular debris. Let's go ahead and click Next to continue. In the lab, you'll find the materials that we'll use for the experiment. We will use a warm water bath, a microcentrifuge, micropipetters, swabs, sample tubes of lysis solution, a salt solution, a resuspension buffer, and two different kinds of alcohols. To collect the epithelial cells, we use a buccal swab to scrape inside the subject's mouth. Epithelial cells on the inside of the subject's mouth will transfer over to the swab. After collecting samples from the subject, let's take a closer look at that swab. You can see cheek cells have been transferred to the swab. Inside of each cheek cell is a nucleus. Inside the nucleus is DNA. Clicking Next allows us to continue our experiment. The tip of the swab is transferred into a tube, and then we add lysis solution to that same tube. Lysis is a Greek word that means to separate. We use this solution to break open the cells. Once the lysis solution is added, the tube is placed into a warm water bath. We can see the lysis solution is breaking open the cells and breaking open the nucleus of those cells. This allows the chromosomes to be released. Remember the chromosomes are made of histone proteins and they're made of the DNA molecule. After the tube is removed from the warm water bath, we go to our next step. Here we're adding a concentrated salt solution to the tube. Adding the salt solution allows us to purify the DNA. The salt will cause debris from the cell to clump.
The tube will then be centrifuged. As the tube is spun, the cell debris and the proteins that clump together because of the salt will sink to the bottom of the tube. Let's go ahead and close the centrifuge and turn it on. So after the tubes spin, we remove them and we can see that material has sunk to the bottom of the tube. That's the proteins, that's the cell debris. The DNA is going to remain in the liquid because DNA is soluble in water. Clicking next allows us to continue our experiment. The next step involves transferring the liquid. Remember the liquid contains the DNA. We move that liquid into a new tube, leaving behind the cell debris and the proteins. Next, we add isopropyl alcohol. This is rubbing alcohol. DNA is soluble in water, but in alcohol, DNA is insoluble. The addition of the alcohol causes DNA to precipitate. This is the opposite of dissolving. Because the DNA clumps as it precipitates, the DNA will become visible during this step. Let's click next to see what happens. Once again, we can place the tube into a centrifuge. Closing the centrifuge and turning it on will spin the samples so that solid materials will sink to the bottom of each tube. The material that sinks to the bottom of the tube now contains purified DNA. We call it a pellet. The pellet can be stored, dried, or frozen for further analysis at a later time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and leaving a note or a question for me in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to keep up with the new videos I'm posting about biology, chemistry, and other cool science stuff. Until next time, stay curious.